This video is all about how you easily get cinematic looking footage out of your DJI Mavic Air 2. All right guys, let's get into it. So I'm a big fan of the DJI Mavic Air 2 just because of the size. It's so small and it can pack up nicely in a backpack. So I recently shot a documentary or like a vlogumentary up in Northern California at the Bel Campo Farms and I brought my DJI Mavic Air 2 with me to shoot all of the drone footage. Now I got some amazing shots with this drone and I got some footage that really helps tie the whole piece together. I'll put a link down below in the description where you guys can check out the full documentary and I highly suggest you check it out after watching this video because it's an interesting story and you'll really get to see how I integrated the drone footage in with some of the other footage that I shot while I was at the farm. Now, what we're talking about is how you get cinematic looking footage fast. And there's two parts to this. Part one is shooting and part two is editing. There's a few things you need to do in shooting to be able to set yourself up to get the best look when you get into your editing software. So first, let's just dive into how you fly the drone because to get cinematic looking footage, I've found that combining two or three movements together gives you that more cinematic look. So a lot of times I'll push forward while tilting down or push forward while rotating to the left or the right. And that gives you dynamic looking footage. You can see the shot here when I'm pushing in on the main offices for Belcampo. I'm using my left thumbstick and I'm pulling it to the left while I'm pushing forward and to the right on my right thumbstick. So not only does it create a diagonal forward motion, but it's rotating around just slightly so that it gives you this dynamic looking shot. So the key is when you're shooting drone footage, you want to put two or three moves together and then you'll be able to have these movements that really give it a different quality than if you're just doing like a single direction on the thumbstick. Now that's not to say that a single movement on your controller won't give you cinematic looking footage. Something I like to do is go in one direction, but do it with just a slight movement. So very subtle. You don't always have to be flying at full speed in every direction to get good looking footage. I highly suggest slowing down the drone and really creeping along in one direction. And that's gonna give you a completely different look than when you're flying with multiple directions with a fast pace. I think the key here is you wanna vary up your shots and you wanna have these different styles of movements. Now, one thing that I default to when I don't know how to necessarily shoot a scene is when in doubt, orbit it out. And what I mean by that is just create an orbit around the subject or the scene that you're in. So that's a two direction movement. That's where you're moving sideways left or right, but then you're also rotating the drone so it creates an arc. Now, yes, the DJI Mavic Air 2 has a function where you can lock onto someone and do an orbit. And those work great. However, I highly suggest learning how to do this manually because you'll be able to control the direction of the arc. And sometimes you'll wanna spin it inwards towards the subject or spin it outwards, or you might wanna add some other movements to it. So being able to fly fully manual is really gonna give you more flexibility when it comes to creating these dynamic looking shots. Okay, the second part to filming that you wanna do is you wanna shoot in D cine like And the reason for this is you're gonna get the most dynamic range and you're gonna be able to get flexibility in post. Now, when it also comes to shooting, I shoot everything at 4K 60. And the reason for this is that it gives me the flexibility to be able to slow it down in post. And the DJI Mavic Air 2 is unique in that you can shoot 4K 60. So everything I do is 4K 60, it's D-Log, and then I use these arcing motions. And that's basically how I set myself up to be able to get cinematic looking footage. All right, so let's jump into Final Cut. I'm gonna show you how I edit my footage and what I do with it to really make it look that much more cinematic. Okay, so this is the shot that we're gonna work with. And you can see the final color grade here and how it looks. So the first thing you wanna do is just set up your project for the framing. Now, in my videos here on this channel, I typically do a two to one aspect ratio. And that's a little bit wider than 16 by nine. Now, the reason I do that is it looks a little more cinematic. And with this documentary that I shot, I actually did it in 21 nine. And if you look at it on your phone or something else, you'll notice it's got that wider look to it. So I suggest if you're going to do the wider look, you actually edit in the wider look. You don't put the black bars on the top and bottom, unless it's like a cinematic sequence within your video where like the black bars fly in, then it's just a section where it's 21.9, but then the rest of your video is 16 by nine. 
There's different ways to do it. Personally, if I'm going for more of the cinematic look, I'm gonna edit in a two to one or a 21 to nine aspect ratio. So you can see this is a 21.9 aspect and you can see my full project down here at the bottom. This is the entire documentary that I shot. So let's set up a new project here and we're gonna set up a resolution. Now you can either do 24 frames a second or 30. Now I personally say that you can do either and have cinematic. I've shot a lot in 30 and I've shot a lot in 24. It's a preference thing if you like that look then potentially yes, that's more cinematic. The documentary was shot in 24, this video is shot in 30. Just so you can see a little bit of a difference. So I'm gonna drop in the clip that we're working with and you can see right here, it's a slow push in on the Belcampo main offices. Now right away, because we shot in 4K 60, we can just retime this and make it slower. It's down to 40% because I'm in a 24 frames per second timeline. And all of a sudden, now you're gonna get an even more cinematic looking shot. So just retiming the 4K 60 to your timeline is gonna give your footage more of that dreamy quality. So right there is one thing that's gonna make your drone footage stand out from other people's because things are going to be moving in this more cinematic style. Doesn't always work, but yeah, it's a good tool to have, and that's why I always shoot 4K 60. And so everything's set up, ready to go to get into your color grade. Now, you can use color grading tools that are in any editing software. You have your hue saturation curves, your color curves, your color wheels, your color board. You can be Premiere, Resolve, Final Cut. Personally, I'm gonna use a specific plugin because this allows me to do all my corrections but then also save them as a LUT. And so LUTs are a great way to speed up the process. Once you've developed a look or you've found a look that you like from another creator, you could just drop a LUT on and then do a few tweaks and you're ready to go. For me, when I'm starting a project, what I do is I come up with a look and then I'll export that out as a LUT and use that as a preset to do the rest of the color grading for that project. So let me just show you the color grading process for this clip and what I go through so you can just see the sequence and then you can decide if this is something you wanna do in your footage or if you just wanna go find a LUT that fits what you're trying to do with your footage. So the software that I'm using is Color Finale Pro. And when I put this on, you'll see that I have a bunch of tools over here. The key to doing a color grade is first, fix the footage, and then second is come up with your co creative color grade. So first I'm gonna edit the layers, and then I'm just gonna do a basic exposure fix. And I found with DJI Mavic Air 2 footage, I typically bring my mids down more than anything. And then I'll stretch out my highlights just so that they're not overexposing, but I wanna bring them up. With Color Finale Pro, I also add a tad of contrast. So let's add seven here, and I wanna pivot this up to about here. So right away you can see all of a sudden this clip is much different. Now the next thing you wanna do just in a basic color grade is add saturation. The way that Color Finale Pro works is I'm working in layers and this is how you can edit in a lot of different color grading softwares. And personally, I like to go layer by layer just so if I wanna go back and tweak something, I can do it at a single layer versus tweaking a bunch of different things in one layer. So we're gonna boost the saturation up and then I'm gonna tweak the white balance a tad because this was at sunset and I wanna have more of that sunset coming in and I'm gonna take out a little bit of green and now that shot looks like it's much more natural to what I actually saw when I was there. First step of any color grading process is get your footage to looking good and natural. And now we get into doing some creative elements. So I'm gonna add some curves to this. I'm gonna make it a little bit of moody. So I'm just gonna, it's a little bit more contrast. Then we're gonna add some blues into the sky. Now, one thing with Color Finale Pro is that you can actually create masks on parts of your footage. So I'm gonna create a mask that only affects the top half of the footage. And what I'm gonna do with that top half is inject some more blue and bring down the exposure a little bit. That way it's retaining more of that sky because it's not fully overexposed and I wanna show more of that blue sky in the background. Now the next layer I'm gonna add is gonna create focus on the subject, which is the building. So I'm gonna add another color wheels layer and I'm gonna create a mask that's a circle around the center. So it's only affecting what's in the center of that circle. And I'm gonna bring up the mids. So that adds more focus on that center because it pops compared to the rest of the footage. Now I'm gonna duplicate that layer and reverse the mask. So now I'm affecting everything outside that mask and bring down the mids. So essentially what I'm doing is driving focus to the center of the frame, whatever my subject is. The outside is gonna be a little bit darker and I'm not doing like a full vignette here. It's just playing around with the mids. So it's more subtle than if you were to put like really dark edges around your footage. 
Now I've created some preset vignettes that I can then add on top of this if I wanna darken the corners even more. And these are a little bit different than your typical vignette because they only affect the mids and the darkest part of your images and will leave the sky untouched. So I'll add this in, bring down my opacity, and here's the before and after of this shot. So the key to getting cinematic looking footage out of your DJI Mavic Air fast is one, shoot with the intent to have these dynamic movements. Then you wanna set up your editing workflow so that you know you have the right framing and then you go in and do your color grade and use your color grade to really emphasize a time of day or a mood that you're going for. Guys, I did another video on this channel that's about color theory and I highly suggest checking that out to look at some different ways that you can grade your footage to be able to get different looks that are more cinematic. But guys, I highly suggest checking out the full documentary that I did when I was at the Bell Campo Farms and you can really see how this footage was integrated into a story-driven piece. And then I'll also link down below here to another video that I think you guys should check out. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you on the next one.